Tengo un, una, una cosa peluda que me está mordiendo. Oh. Ah, porque no le gusta que lo...
Uh, and good evening to everyone. Welcome um, again to a class to English Corporativo. Okay, uh, guys, um, I remember that yesterday, uh, well, we we're discussing about how to construct um, structures, I mean, sentences on a structure, also um, about requesting favors. Who did the homework? Teacher. You? Okay, very good. So um what we're going to do um right now is I'm gonna just yeah, I guess two or three people as volunteer who wants to share the questions that um you have created. I don't know if you have it right there or um probably you gonna check the file on there in order to read what are those questions and, and, and well you can read um some of them in order to see how they look, look, I mean, how they look like, okay? Okay. Okay. Who is going to, uh, Angela, you said that you're going to be the first one, right? Excuse me, teacher. Okay. <laughs> okay, you said that you're going to be the first one. Is that correct? The... Yes, teacher. Okay, perfect. Okay. Just read um, the sentences that you have. Just that. That's what we're going to do right now. Because I, I just want to check um, uh, how, how, how you can search sentences using uh, the structures that we uh, just uh, saw yesterday in the video and also say the, the structure that I was explaining yesterday too. So, go ahead. Uh, excuse me, teacher, que I don't know, remember uh, exactly the... How are you? Uh, a little, uh, give me a minute. Um, please? Yeah, yes, of course. Uh, take your time. While okay. you do that, I will be just sharing my mm -hmm. screen here. Um, and I'm going to show you the lesson I've yet that we're going to be working okay. today. Okay, so don't worry. Okay, here we have this is gonna be the um the lesson I've yet for tonight. Do you find them, Angela? If not, I can, and probably I can help you with. You can check um, the sentences here. And the situation is that I can see your names. Let, let me just take a look at this. Angela, one of these posts is yours. Because I have just three here. Question she is in model, requests, requesting uh, with model. The model birds, birds. Yeah. 
um okay uh angela um is any of these topics i mean uh past year eh, years alguno de estos es de los que usted presentó uh yes um which one can i can i help me yeah sure of course um <clears throat> the models verb yes teacher yes why right? that's correct um i should uh i should understand english class maybe i should i should yes of course angela um the question or the sentences the uh, yeah. the structured center no just Center? what you're going to do is just read the, the examples that you have for this uh the question yes uh, the questions uh-huh okay um <clears throat> Can you uh, can you um may, can you please um mm -hmm. um play maybe ah uh, you mean uh... Okay, Angela, um, I guess uh, there is a, 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 just a, a little question the read? Here. Yes, you have to read uh, the questions that okay. you have. Just, okay. Just, mm -hmm. But okay. I don't know which one is yours here. Can I, o sea, read me in this moment? The, sí. I don't know. The, okay. Sí, Can usted, I, lo que va a hacer este, an, 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 Angela, Es únicamente leer este okay. un par de oraciones de las que usted haya construido eh, acerca de los modales, de, de, del tema que estuvimos discutiendo el día de ayer. Ok. Sí, eh, I... I should... I should... Um, learning English um mm -hmm. every day maybe. okay i should uh, start mm -hmm. english maybe mm -hmm. okay good good excellent so um guys uh, what we're going to do um i don't know probably a uh, just enough you have work on this uh, exercises because I'm just checking in here there are just three pause and uh, one of you haven't uh, completed this, this activity it is supposed that in this discussion forum below you are going to uh, make requests that's mean uh, create sentences using models if clauses endurance uh, the purpose uh, for uh, working on it is uh, create sentences in order to request a favor. So if we have three different contexts, the first one is let me uh, send money for a soda, return these books to the library for me, let me borrow your math homework, can I look at the magazine when you finish reading it? So all of them are just a, a specific context that you uh, can take into account in order to construct sentences using the models of class and journals like uh, the ones that we have here. So um, there you have uh, yesterday we were discussing about uh, how to use um, th this kind of questions in order to request uh, favors from less formal to more formal. For instance, when we are, uh, we were mentioned yesterday also that when we are with friends or uh, people that we know, family probably, we can ask um, like informal questions such as, uh, can I borrow your pencil? Can I borrow... Um, your, your scissors or um, things like that, things that are like uh, no important if you want to say something like that. So it's things that um, we are not going to, to get in trouble if we take it, okay? So 
and also we're just checking and uh, there there are some other uh, structures that we can use when uh, we have a situation that requires to be more polite or more formal as it says there in the, in the slide uh, questions or structures such as i was wondering if you mind uh, lending me your card that, because uh, we're requesting that so that's become formal because there is something important we are requesting um, because lending a, a card to someone is nothing like you're going to take just like, uh, okay, can I borrow your car, right? I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're uh, uh, in that moment probably driving the, the, the car. Uh, so they, that, that's what I was referring to. So um the question the structure of the questions that we gonna use is going to depend on the thing that we are going to ask for um today we are going to be working on lesson objective that is 2.5 and it says by the end of this class you will develop skills in listening for specific information listening to requests listen to telephone conversations um first of all here we have a video and also, uh, we have this video with an activity that this activity is going to be evaluated. Um, here we have three different questions. The first question, it says, what does Dino wants to order from Robert? Uh, what does Scott wants to order from Maggie? And what kind of favor does Phil want? That's, those are the three questions that we are going to be answering with this audio. Um, what I'm going to do here is to play this audio, this video, and then uh, you're going to tell me the correct answer for each one. And then we're going to move on. It, the next part is going to be the lesson objective 3.7. Okay. So um, just pay attention to this. And then I'll be um, asking uh, those questions. The one that we have there, in order that you can provide the correct answer. Pay attention to this. Yes. Hi everyone, by the end of this class you will develop skills in listening for specific information. After listening to the audio program you will complete a quiz in order to check your understanding. So let's get started. You'll listen to three requests. Your task is to write down what each caller requests and identify whether the person agrees or disagrees to the request. Hello? Hi, Robert. This is Tina. Hi, Tina. What's up? Well, actually, would you mind lending me your camera for a few days? I want to take some photos of my new apartment to send to my folks. No problem. You can borrow it. Oh, thanks a million. Hello? Hi, Maggie. This is Kyle. Oh, hi. How are things with you? Pretty good. Listen, I was wondering if I could borrow your bread maker. My bread maker? Don't tell me you are going to bake. I know. I'm planning to cook dinner for my girlfriend this weekend, and I want to bake bread. And I want it to be perfect. I remember you baked some amazing bread with that thing. So, what do you say? Can I borrow it? I'll be careful. Well, I have bad news. It's broken. I've been meaning to get it fixed, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. Oh, too bad. You know, you can always just bake bread on your own. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe I'll just go to a bakery. Hello? Hi, Li Ling. It's Phil. Hi, Phil. What's up? Not much, but I was wondering if I could ask you for a favor. Maybe. Try me. Well, I have to go out of town for a few days next week. Uh-huh. Could I leave Polly with you while I'm gone? Polly? Who's Polly? You know, Polly. My bird? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Your bird. I don't know, Phil. I really don't like birds very much. They're messy and they make a lot of noise and... No, not Polly. She's really a great bird. She's really clean and very quiet. She won't bother you, I promise. Oh, <sighs> All right. I'll do it. Thanks. I really appreciate it. I'll bring her over on Tuesday night. Okay. But you owe me one. Okay, there you have. Um, there are three conversations um, that we released 
So we are going to answer each question. The first one, it says, what does Tina wants to borrow from Robert? Robert, make it camera or, or a bird? Camera. What is the correct answer? Okay, yeah. camera, very good. Number two, uh, what does Kyle want to borrow from Maggie? A bread maker. A bread maker, that's correct. So he, 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 what happened with him? He don't want to uh, bake something? It's going to have his, his girlfriend with, her, with him if he mm -hmm. wants to cook for her. Okay, very good, but he's not a, a kid baker. Okay. Yeah. Yes, uh, that's what he was uh, requesting for that advice. Uh, and the number three, just take a look at this question. It says, what kind of favor does Phil want? Um, what is the correct answer? Phil wants uh, Lily to take care of a bear while he's awake, or Phil wants to link, link to lend her camera, or Phil wants to link, link uh, to lend her braid maker, which is the correct answer here. Number one. Number but one, number two, number three. The first one. The first one. Okay, very good. So just one. We're not going to check the answer there. Well, if you correct, if you answer these questions in that way, so that's mean all oh, a uh, answer is gonna be correct, and you're gonna get 33 points. Very good. So we're going to move to the next lesson of yet it. Uh, so pay attention to this part because we're going to be discussing here. Um, and it says, by the end of this class, you will learn in the direct request, okay? That's the uh, end of uh, a tonight class, okay? Just pay attention because we have uh, four different uh, videos related to this lesson. That's what we are going to learn now. Um, so just take a look of this uh, first part. It says, um, so uh, in the direct request introduced by that. Uh, pay attention to this part because we're going to be moving on to uh, the next one. And uh, also I will explain in some things here in order it can be a, a better understanding related to this stuff. Okay, pay attention to this part. Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll learn how to make indirect requests. We will focus on turning statements into indirect requests. Now let's discuss what indirect requests are. So indirect requests means that you want to give a message to someone who is not present or not available. Let's say for example you call a person and the person is not there um, and you leave a message for that person. Well this is what we call an indirect request. So let me present some structure. If you see the chart on the screen we can see how this structure changes depending on the type of sentence. So if we have statements, imperatives, yes and no questions, and WH questions, those will be different whenever we change them to indirect requests. Uh, now I'll be discussing this individually. Uh, and then um, we're going to try to make sense of all of them together. The idea is to be able to make, uh, to, to take any kind of um, sentence and then change that to a form of indirect request. So in this particular lesson, we're going to focus with the first one, with statements. So as we can see, um, statements are quite easy to change, right? We have a statement there, Jeff, Tony's having a party. So that statement, we change it to an end, indirect request. You call, um, maybe uh, maybe Jeff, uh, Jeff the assistant, uh, and uh, you want to give a message to him because he was not available. And then you, you, um, you tell um, the assistant, uh, could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? All right, so it's quite easy, right? We just kind of like introduce, could you tell? And here we're going to introduce uh, the person who uh, that message is for. So remember that what you're doing is you're leaving a message with Jeff's assistant. Uh, and then Jeff's assistant will, do, will then give that message to him. So it's quite simple, right? So what we want to do is uh, we want to um, uh, leave um, quite a few messages for Jeff. Uh, and then we want to practice changing those statements into indirect requests. In this case, we're going to practice uh, changing those uh, statements to indirect requests introduced by uh, that. 
So the first one that we can see there is, okay, Jeff, uh, Tony is having a party. That's the message. Uh, so how would I give the message to the receptionist or to his assistant? Um, could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? By the way, the reason you see that in parentheses is because that is optional. That means that you can either say, could you tell Jeff Tony is having a party? Or you could just include it. You could say, could you tell Jeff that Tony is having a party? So let's write a couple of other um, uh, statements, if you will. All right, And these are messages that I want to give uh, to uh, Jeff's uh, receptionist, right? Uh, let me, I'll change the size a little bit so that you can see that pretty clear. So how do we change this next statement? Jeff, Tony is going to invite everyone from work. All right, so once again, we want to deliver the message. We want to leave the message with the receptionist. So um, could you tell Jeff that Tony is going to invite everyone from work so basically the only thing that we did um, is if you see this is the message right and what we did is we just pretty much sort of like have the same thing we only added and I'm gonna highlight that in red we only added could you tell Jeff that right because that the message is for Jeff once again right? could you tell Jeff that Tony is going to invite everyone from work. Now highlight that in yellow so you can see. So this was the only thing that we added. And we're going to do the same thing for other kind of statements. Uh, and so let's play around with other kinds of statements real quick. Um, let's see. Something related to a party, right? And we want to give the message to Jeff. All right. All um, right. Okay, um, so let me change the size a little bit. So, Jeff, Tony is going to have a lot of food and drinks at the party. So, how can we change this to an indirect request or an indirect message? Well, first of all, I mentioned that um, at this point, because everything is directed towards uh, Jeff, uh, we want to say, could you tell Jeff that? And we're simply going to copy this, as you can see. Right? And by the way, uh, something that I forgot to do was I just forgot to add this question mark here, right? Okay, there we go. Uh, so it's quite simple as you can see, right? Uh, let's do one more. Um, what's the message? Well, I want to also give another message to Jeff and this message is gonna be all right um, Tony is gonna have a DJ who is gonna play all kinds of music right so once again what is it that we want to do well uh, quite simple we're gonna just borrow this could you tell Jeff that all right and we're simply going to just uh, the, the message we don't change much on the message at this point right it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, so could you tell Jeff that Tony is going to have a DJ who's going to play all kinds of music, right? That's the message that I want to give to, uh, to Jeff. I don't change much. Okay, guys, um, there you have a, some, some um, examples of how we can share information to someone else. It basically, here with this kind of uh, questions, um, is that we are just providing information uh, that we have for a specific person. Uh, for instance, uh, if Lorena wants to share information to Jose, uh, but uh, Jose is not available, so uh, Lorena request Gen Z in order to um, give that information to Jose. So this is basically how this uh, kind of sentence works. Um, it is like a request that we are going to ask someone else in order to deliver a message. So uh, we're gonna say, we are going to say always the same, uh, I mean, we're going to always uh, use the same structure 
Um, in this case, it's gonna be like, who you tell, wanna say the name of the person, and we have to use that if we want, because this is optional. Uh, for instance, we can say like, could you tell Jeff that Tony is going to invite everyone from work? So um, in that way, we can do it. So, um, because we are transfer, uh, transferring the, all the information that someone else has, uh, well, that in this case, we are going to transfer the information that someone else is giving to us um, to a specific person that is no there in that moment, okay? And uh, as he mentioned, we can use that uh, as optional uh, because we can say, like, if we want, we can say like, would you tell Jeff, uh, Tony is going to invite everyone from work. So it, it, is it possible to do it in that way? And also if you check the example here, it says, uh, could you tell Jeff Tony is having a party? So it, it is optional as you can see there. Uh, now we are going to see how we can request um, something uh, to someone using imperative. That's the, the, the other video that we are going to be watching today. But um, before going there, what I want you to do is in, well, well, well I played uh, the, the other video, I want you to create a sentence using the same structure that we are uh, uh, checking in here for indirect requests introduced by that. So that's what we're going to do right now. Try to create just one question. Uh, and remember, we are going to say, I mean, we're going to use the same structure. Could you tell, wanna say a name and then the message that we are going to share with some, to someone, okay? So uh, do that. And after that, you can share that uh, sentence there in the chat box of this uh, video conference. So that's me here in, in, in Zoom. Now we're going to move to the next part. This is um, creating sentences using indirect requests. Pay attention to this part too. This is the second part. Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll learn how to make indirect requests. In this class, we will focus on turning imperatives into indirect requests. We use indirect requests when you want to give a message to someone who is not present or not available. Let's say, for example, you call a person and the person is not there. Uh, but uh, maybe the assistant or a receptionist answers the phone. So you leave a message with that person. This is what we call an indirect request. So let me present the structure. If you see this chart on the screen, we can see how this structure changes depending on the type of sentence. So for example, if we have statements, which is what we saw in our previous class, uh, then these statements will change in this form, right? Could you tell Jeff? that Tony is having a party, or could you tell Jeff Tony is having a party? Um, so we did a lot of practice with this in our previous lesson. Today we're gonna focus, or we're gonna um, pay close attention to imperatives. Uh, so we're gonna have a series of imperatives and we will be changing those to uh, indirect requests using uh, infinitives. If you can see on the screen, we're gonna uh, take this imperative, and um, so the imperative is Jeff, don't be late. Now this, we're gonna turn it into an indirect request by using infinitives. And so the way that we will do this is that we will use can you tell plus the object, and then we'll use an infinitive. This infinitive could be in a negative form or it could also be in a positive form. Uh, so let me just quickly point out the structure that we're gonna be using. Um, all right, uh, so I mentioned uh, we're going to use could. Um, this can also be can, by the way. And uh, then we're going to use um, a subject there. It could be you, but uh, it could be any other subject as well, right? And then uh, typically we're, we will use the verb tell. And then I mentioned this is going to be followed by the object. The object is who are we giving that message to? So for example, in this case, it happens to be Jeff. Um, and after that, we will use um, an infinitive, as I mentioned. Uh, this could be in the form of a negative infinitive. Uh, so in this case, uh, let's just take that example there. Um, can you, and I will 
tell the object it's Jeff. All right. And in this case, uh, this happens to be a negative one. So we will say not to be late. And then we'll put a question mark. And that's how we would change um, an imperative into an indirect request. So now let's say that the imperative is different. Okay, now we're gonna, I'm going to give an example of a positive one. So what would be that? Well, maybe we want to give a message to Jeff. Jeff was not there, so but we talked to the uh, to his assistant. So uh, bring some uh, drinks for the party. All right, that's the message that we want to give to Jeff. This is in the form of an imperative. So how do we go about changing this into um, an indirect request. Well, again, we mentioned we will use could, and then we'll use you. Uh, in this case, we will use the verb tell. The object I mentioned is Jeff. All right, so we will say, could you tell Jeff? And if you notice, this is not in a negative form, so therefore, we will not use not. Okay, and we will simply use the infinitive form. Could you tell? Could you tell Jeff? to bring some drinks for the party. There we go. Um, and this is what I refer to, or this is what we refer to whenever we say that that's an infinitive, right? So um, it, to bring um, or not to, uh, and then the verb, right? So if we have a negative form, we will use not to, and then the verb. If we have a positive form, we will say to, and then plus the verb. That's what we mean by that. So could you tell Jeff to bring some drinks for the party? And that's how we turn that imperative into an indirect request. Teacher, your mic is off. Okay, my apologies. Uh, okay, thank you so much for letting me know that. Um, well, I, I was just telling you that I'm going to stop here this video because um, as you can see there, uh, to construct sentence uh, like this using imperatives, it, it is a little bit easy. Why? Because we are going to use the same structures as always. We're going to use like cool plus the, the subject that we're going to be working on. So in this case, it, we can use, instead of you, can you, um, well, if we're requesting someone, an else could be like a, a he, she, we, or can, a, a, well, we can use a different subject there if we want. And in this case, what I'm using just because the, 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 the ones that we typically use in order to express something. So in that case, you can say, could you tell when I use the object? In this case, the object is going to be someone. Someone that we are, a, a, or in this case, the person we're going to transfer the message that, that we want using the imperatives. Uh, in order to construct imperatives, usually they start with a uh, infinitive forms. What are the infinitive forms in this case? Infinitive forms are verbs that uh, they are they are not conjugated in in a specific uh, tense. So that means they keeps like the the same structures like in, in Spanish, uh, like the verbs that end in um, er or AR or AIR, okay? So like correr, saltar, reír, estudiar. So, but when we use in this, in this structure, um, we are going to do the following because we are, um, we are going to use this as imperatives, okay? Uh, this kind of structures allows us to do the, the, this kind of thing. Um, for instance, could you tell uh, Lorena, okay? Could you tell Lorena uh, to stay away from that boom? Okay, so th this is something that we are going to, to say to someone uh, through other person. So they, we are requesting to someone to say something to uh, another uh, person. Basicamente, este, este tipo de estructura nos permite a nosotros poderle solicitar a... Una tercera persona 
que le entregue un mensaje eh, a otra persona, ¿sí? Es lo que les decía este hace un momento. Por ejemplo, Ángela tiene un mensaje para Lorena, pero Ángela no le transmite ese mensaje directamente, sino que este utiliza a José para que le lleve esa información a Lorena. Entonces, Ángela le va este, a solicitar a José, utilizando la estructura, eh, la estructura, bueno, en español sería como, este, le podrías decir a Lorena eh, que trabaje desde casa. ¿Ok? Es como, como un imperativo. ¿sí? Le podrías decir a Lorena que trabaje desde casa. ¿A quién se lo está diciendo? Ah, se lo está diciendo a José. José luego va a ir y le va a compartir el mensaje a Lorena. ¿sí? Así es como funciona este tipo de eh, solicitudes indirectas. O, o este, en este caso, eh, digamos, eh, oraciones este, que nos permiten eh, pedir un favor a alguien más referente este, en el caso de, 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 de liberar uh, mensajes a alguien más, ¿verdad? Eh, solicitarle un favor de llevarle eh, X información a otra persona. Así es como funciona eso. Ahora, eh, en el primer ejercicio que nosotros veíamos, este, hacíamos uso del DAT, ¿sí? Más el mensaje que nosotros íbamos a transmitir, que era, en este caso, una oración completa, ¿verdad? Eh, Le podrías decir... Este, a, a Tom, por ejemplo, eh, que el día de mañana tendremos una fiesta. ¿Sí? Ese es un mensaje que yo le voy a entregar a, a, a Tom, porque alguien más me lo está solicitando a mí. Perdón. Ahora, eh, cuando nosotros utilizamos infinitivos, son, uh, eh, perdón, cuando nosotros utilizamos los imperativos, son como una especie de órdenes que nosotros damos a alguien más a través de otra persona. Asimismo sucede cuando nosotros vamos a utilizar, ya van a ver en el próximo video, este, los yes no question. En el caso de los yes no questions, nosotros lo que estamos haciendo es eh, solicitándole a una persona, a una persona X, que en este caso sería una, ter una tercera persona, que le realice una pregunta este, a otra persona. ¿sí? El mismo caso. Lorena quiere conocer la respuesta de Ángela, pero para conocer la respuesta de Ángela necesita este, enviarle el mensaje con José. En español, este, esta estructura eh, nosotros usualmente la, 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 la utilizamos y decimos, le podrías preguntar este, a Marcos si este, vendrá a trabajar el día de mañana, ¿sí? Le podrías preguntar a Marcos. O sea, nosotros no le estamos preguntando directamente a Marcos, sino que le estamos diciendo a un tercero que le pregunte a Marcos. Así funcionan las eh, preguntas indirectas, ¿sí? las eh, solicitudes indirectas, ¿sí? porque nosotros estamos utilizando un tercero. ¿Sí queda claro eso? Yes. Sí, excelente. Eh, y por último tenemos los WH Questions. ¿Conocen los WH Words? ¿Sí conocen los WH Words? ¿Cuáles son los WH Words? What, where, what, where, where, how, where, when, how, who, etc. Ok, well, you know them. Um, so, in the case of the WH Questions, we can use it in order to Uh, request something to someone in order to deliver any message or in this case, in order to deliver a question uh, to someone else. And there you can see, um, in this slide, you can see like this, the structure that we're going to be using in order to do that. It, it is like um, the, the context is going to be like Jeff. We want, we want to deliver a message to Jeff. Um, and the question is going to be, when does the party start? Okay. Can you ask, that's the, the, the structure that we're going to be using here. Uh, can you ask, okay? Le podría, o puedes preguntarle o le podrías preguntar, ¿sí? ¿A quién? A la persona que le vamos a entregar el mensaje. Bueno, la, el mensaje que le va a entregar la otra persona, porque nosotros no estamos hablando directamente con esa persona, sino que estamos utilizando un tercero. Le podrías preguntar a Jeff cuándo este, eh, inicia la fiesta. ¿Ok? ¿Dónde eh, se llevará a cabo la fiesta? ¿Sí? 
¿Quiénes irán a la fiesta? ¿Ok? Eh, ¿Cuáles este, serán eh, las... Eh, digamos, utilizando la, el, el, el WH Word de cuáles sería... Eh, ¿Cuáles son las canciones que tocarán en la fiesta? ¿Sí? De esa manera nosotros estamos construyendo una oración haciendo el uso de los WH Word eh, simplemente este, para que una persona, en este caso un tercero, le pregunte esa misma, eh, valga la redundancia, pregunta este, a X persona que nosotros queremos conocer su respuesta. ¿Sí? Le podrías preguntar a X y utilizamos nosotros la pregunta. En la otra persona, pues por lógica, este, va a ir y le va a preguntar eh, directamente este, eh, el tipo, bueno, la pregunta que nosotros estamos transmitiendo. ¿Cuándo inicia la fiesta? Le podría preguntar. Ah, la otra persona eh, le va a dar la respuesta y esta persona le va a transmitir la respuesta. A la otra. Así funciona este tipo de eh, preguntas indirectas. ¿Sí? Bien, eh, como ya he explicado la parte del yes, no question, el w questions, eh, wh questions, que son como las, las más básicas eh, para transmitir información, porque nosotros no cambiamos este, eh, la forma en sí de, de, del tipo de pregunta que nosotros vamos a hacer por medio de una pregunta indirecta. ¿Por qué? Porque simplemente es utilizar. Podrías preguntarle a y luego utilizar la pregunta. Podrías preguntarle a Sofía si sí, ella estará libre el, el viernes. ¿Sí? De esa manera nosotros podemos ir construyendo este, preguntas que simplemente van a ser transmitidas a alguien más. Vamos a cancelar esta parte de aquí y nos vamos a dirigir directamente este, al ejercicio. Eh, porque aquí tenemos nosotros eh, eh, unas indicaciones a seguir. Um, los que ya lo completaron, excelente. Veo que pues, muchos ya van bastante avanzados con los ejercicios, lo cual está muy bien. Eh, para los que aún no lo han hecho, este, la indicación para este ejercicio nos dice, I'm going to switch to English in order to explain this part. It says, rewrite the sentences as indirect requests. In other words, ask someone to deliver the message. That's what we usually do with this kind of questions. Um, Only complete the missing words and make sure you use the correct spelling and punctuation. Okay, there, there you have. Uh, this is uh, how we are going to um, uh, complete uh, th this kind of sentence. It's just adding the information that is missing. Okay, so then the number one, uh, it says, how many friends uh, I can bring to his party? Tony, how many friends can, you, can I bring to the party? So we want to say, uh, can you tell Tony, okay, can you tell Tony how many friends I can bring to his body? So things like that. There you have the structures and also you can work on it. There are just um, four sentences that you can work. Um, and after that, so this is like the end of the section number three, we are going to move to uh, the midterm. Uh, I don't know if you have already taken this meter. Yes. Yes. Lorena, you say yes. Angela, yes. Jancy, what about yeah. you? Yeah. And uh, just let me see who else is here. Um, Angelica, Elvin, Joanna. Everybody has already taken this test. Yes or no? Yes, teacher. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Amazing, very good. I think everyone has already completed this part. Um, we, because we have to um, take a look of this, we're going to see some, just only the, the I mean, uh, <laughs> my apologies. We're going to see only the instructions for each exercise. Then you, if you have any questions, you can contact me and I'll be more than happy in order to assist you with, okay? So uh, this is the listening part. Uh, the first part, it says, listen to the conversation, then check the correct, uh, the correct answers. For each one, you have multiple options. So uh, in here, you're going to find four different sentences in order to complete. Easy, right? So um, in the part number two, what we are going to do is choose the correct word. Uh, basically, what we're going to do here is just to identify 
which of these uh, options is the correct one? Uh, for each question, you're gonna see a blank space where you have to uh, set the correct word, uh, in this case, the correct options that you have for each for each one, for each item, okay? So in here you have just only, uh, I mean, in here you have only four sentences in order to complete it. Um, then we're going to move to the part number three and that it says put the word in order. Uh, here we have an example. The instruction is, it says, uh, put the words in order to make sentences. Here we have an example is when a person says it in reliable, uh, uh, reliable A means up there. This is, uh, well, this exercise is like unscrambling uh, all words in order to have the correct sentence. That's what you are going to do, unscramble them. Uh, the section number D uh, is gonna be like the, the part number four, you're gonna be using German phrases. In the general phrases, as you remember, it is like using verbs with the ing form. But here you are going to use the correct verb with the ing form, according to the information that we're going to find here. Uh, remember, just to keep in mind that the information that is provided in the sentence is, has to match with the information that we are going to use in order to answer each item, okay? That, that's all. Um, there you have just three examples and, and that, that's it. Uh, the section number E is gonna be like the part number five. Uh, what you're going to do is complete the sentence. This is in uh, uh, multiple questions. Uh, it's like a multiple questions because basically what you have to do here is just place the correct phrase for each sentence here. Uh, there you have the blank space where it's supposed that uh, one of these options must be placed. Um, there you have four sentences for it for the for this exercise. So in section number five. And the last part, this is a reading part, something that uh, probably won't work, um, uh, but um, well, in this case gonna be like develop some exercises later in order to, to try to improve this kind of uh, skills. You see, uh, as you know, I mean, uh, reading is one of the important parts of learning English. And reading and also listening, um, I, I, I don't know if uh, someone has already explained about this, but there are like uh, the two um, skills that we use in order to uh, get an input about the language that we are learning. So reading, uh, probably we haven't worked uh, any, well, so now, probably just some exercises, but uh, this coming section, section number uh, four, wanna be uh, just developing some more um, activities in order to develop this, this skill, the reading part, okay? But uh, as you can see there, well, in this case, you are going to um, read the newspaper article and then check uh, the three true statements. There you have six options, but there are only three that are the correct. Okay. So this is basically what you're going to do here in the meantime. I don't know if you have any question. Do you have any question? No. No. No at the moment. Okay, very good. If you have any question, uh, as I said before, you can contact me and I'll be more than happy in order to assist you with uh, these exercises. Okay, uh, we're going to move to the lesson uh, number, I mean, to the section number four. And there, um, this part, uh, we're going to find the first lesson object. And uh, what? Well, it, it is a short lesson object and it says, in this class, you will learn how to tell stories. Okay, that's the theme of this uh, uh, of this lesson. Um, guys, well, in order to complete that lesson objective, uh, you have to prepare something for tomorrow because we're going to be working on this. Um, 
if you want, you can take notes because this is gonna be a homework that you have you are going to develop in order to complete this objective for tomorrow. Uh, and now I'm going to switch to Spanish in order to explain the activity. Para el día de mañana, este, para nosotros, bueno, el objetivo es bien claro. Dice, en esta clase nosotros aprenderemos eh, a cómo contar historias. Vale, les voy a pedir por cuestiones de tiempo este, que eh, veamos el video, este, veamos el video eh, ejemplo que tenemos para, la, para esta eh, lección. Y eh, para el día de mañana, ustedes me van a preparar una historia de algo que a ustedes les haya ocurrido eh, o si ustedes pues no tienen como algo interesante este, eh, que, o, o simplemente no quieren eh, compartir información este, sobre su vida, entonces inventen. Pero la idea es que el día de mañana nosotros vamos a estar compartiendo una historia, ya sea de nuestra vida personal o este, una historia que nosotros hayamos este, creado, inventado eh, sobre X situación. Eh, vamos a tomar como ejemplo el video. Aquí, este, bueno, es un eh, Around the Campfire. Eh, ahí se cuentan pues historias como de, de terror, cosas así. Nosotros eh, no solamente lo vamos a enfocar a eso, sino que podemos utilizar este, eh, utilizar este tipo, esta actividad con este otro propósito. Por ejemplo, eh, cómo contar una historia este, de una, de algo que yo viví, ¿sí? O cómo contar una historia este, de que alguien más me compartió a mí, ¿sí? Eso es lo que vamos a hacer. Eh, el video, si lo pueden tomar como ejemplo, eh, a, a manera de cómo estructuramos nosotros las oraciones a la hora de expresarnos en inglés cuando compartimos información. Eh, vean el video, ¿sí? Es, es muy entretenido. Eh, para el día de mañana, todos van a participar. Así que les voy a pedir eh, de favor que vengamos listo. Uh, vamos a dar este inicio a la clase a las 7 en punto. Y eh, solamente este, vamos a hacer una pequeña introducción sobre la, el, el, el tema que vamos a, a estar desarrollando. Y luego este, comenzamos eh, a, a contar nuestras historias. ¿Sí? Como les digo, esto es, eh, este, este ejercicio este nos va a permitir a nosotros utilizar el idioma eh, y utilizar nuestro vocal, vocabulario que ya poseemos, ¿eh? Eh, haciendo uso pues, de experiencias que nosotros ya hemos vivido. O si no, pues simplemente las inventan. ¿Preguntas? ¿Preguntas? No, vaya, yo tengo una pregunta. Este, ¿Cuánto debe durar la historia? Bien, este, la historia este, puede durar entre eh, tres a cuatro minutos. ¿sí? Que no, no nos vayamos a extender contando una historia. Eh, y y la vamos, a, vamos a utilizar toda la clase para ello. No, traten de crear una historia un poco este, corta, que nos tome tres minutos. Si gustan, eh, utilicen el, el cronómetro en su teléfono. Escriba su historia y luego este, mida el tiempo que usted eh, utiliza contando esa historia. ¿Sí? Bien. ¿Otra pregunta? ¿Alguien más tiene otra pregunta? Hola. Wendy, este quiere compartir algo usted, creo que tiene el micrófono abierto. No sé si le no. No. Bye. Entonces, este, eh, chicos, esa sería su uh, tarea para el día de mañana. Eh, por favor, estemos listos porque va a ser de forma aleatoria. Eh, va a ser rifada la participación y sí me gustaría muchísimo que todos participaran. Eh, de momento, pues se nos ha terminado este, la hora, eh, lastimosamente. Eh, y bueno, solo desearles una feliz eh, noche.
y este, bendiciones a cada uno de ustedes. Cuídense mucho. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Have a nice night. Bless. Thank you.